Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I was always interested in uh, seeing how or anticipating how my uh, counterpart will react uh, in a given situation, which is uh, what would be the mental process occurring in his or her head in certain kind of um, conversations or situations that uh, that person might be put in. That is uh, anticipating um, no, what would be the next move of my enemy, my acquaintance, my co-worker and so on. So how uh, I think uh, I accomplished some of this, you can't be always uh, obviously uh, right about things and you can't always anticipate that with 100% uh, accuracy, but you can have a um, good odds in, uh, in figuring things out. How? Uh, you look at the pattern of um, decisions, of actions taken by the individual related to, related to similar circumstances. So you see how that person interacted and reacted to certain kind of situations in the past that would be related to what's going on now or would occur in the future. So you can anticipate how that person uh, most likely would react. Now, you can get to a precision, it depends uh, how, how long have you been observing this person's behavior in the past and the, the, how much the, the, um, the pattern, how strong the, the correlation is uh, between his uh, you know, relation, uh, uh, his uh, reaction to the certain event. And then you might be able to, I don't know, about 80%, 90%, 70% at least, you know, anticipate the person's move. That's a very important thing in everything you do when you interact with people. Now, um, when you say, let's say you have a person and you have the circumstance in the future, how can you uh, test that you reach that point where you kind of know that person's way of thinking in certain kind of areas? Is if you anticipate something and say, I think that uh, this person will do that thing tomorrow when he's gonna show up there. And then that happened. And again, another circumstance related, again, you think the same way and you're uh, able to, um, to uh, how should I put it, um, tell the audience or tell yourself what's going to happen in the future, what decision this person is going to make in a very consistent way, right? So uh, in this case, we have uh, Ukraine, the United States, NATO, Russia. I've been saying for a long time, long time, almost from the very beginning, of uh, this uh, war in Ukraine, that the Ukrainians will receive everything but nuclear weapons. Everything but nuclear weapons. And then, that includes um, fighters, boots on the ground in Ukraine, foreign boots, under different uh, uh, term uh, names, volunteers or peace-loving uh, makers and all that. You know, perfect uh, people. They will, they will find a way. They will send uh, the Ukrainians long-range missiles. They will send them uh, fighter jets, not only the MiG-29s, of F-16s and other pilots. They have the command working with, uh, working with. That's a weasel way of saying commanding the Ukrainian what to do. Actually, the Ukrainians are just the, the uh, executors. Hey, I'm going to do this uh, of what these guys decide over there, which is NATO, United States. NATO is United States. Everybody else is just over there for numbers. So you so uh, gains legitimacy. So I said it many times. That's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. It's gonna be certain. And I also expressed on many occasions how that is achieved by starting little. You know my mountain slope uh, theory or you know model which you start little. Okay, like a bully. A bully wants to take your uh, lunch. Okay, sandwich. He's not going to come most likely and grab it. He's going to come slowly and say, hey, what's going on? Hey, well, mm, and see how you react. And then, hey, what's going on? Hey, mm, 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 ha, ha, ha. I don't like how you look at me. Uh, what, what you have over there? Give me a... They just escalate it and see at each escalation how they're smacked down. If they're not smacked down, they will reach their goal, getting your lunch sandwich. So the same here right now. Uh, the Ukrainians come clean. No surprise to me that I would like to share that with you telling us that uh, eventually we will receive F-16s. Yes, we know. Weasels, remember, F-16, there's nothing. No, 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 no. Biden said it. Many people, they said no tanks. No, no, no. 
tanks are over there. No, no, no long-range missile systems. Really? The uh, British are buying for the Ukrainians a 100 to 300 uh, kilometer range. It's a long range missile system. And they still have it over there based on what targets they were able to reach in Russia. So all these things, when you know how they think, I can tell you what's going to happen with these guys. And here you have him. You have him, Mr. Um, Defense Minister, no, Foreign Minister of Ukraine telling us one way or another, eventually, uh, Ukraine will get F-16s. No, no surprise here. Surprise there? Well, if you're surprised, then maybe you do not, you know, you're not in their brain yet. So let's see what... I'm not calling this a coincidence because I've been saying this about each and every Howizer, uh armored, uh, armored fighting vehicle, um, tank, long-range missile system, uh, troops on the ground. You say, there's no troops on the ground? There are troops on the ground. Remember the pen that that confirmed it. They didn't find it. Find out it then with those Pentagon leaks. We said, oh well, actually they have troops on the ground, but just a few of them, just uh, defending the the embassies, and that's it. Really, they are supposed inspectors. They are military advisors. I send you back in time what the U.S. military advisors were doing in Korea and in Vietnam. Remember, just if you don't know, I'm telling you what they did. They were active participants. Okay, so they were, but they were called here. Uh, they were just uh, advise, meter advisors, and they were just training people, staying around and train them. And people, yeah, yeah, that's what they do. Okay, give me your money. I'm gonna give it to you back tomorrow with three thousand percent interest. We're gonna meet tomorrow. Shit, no. So anyway, but give me the money if you're so credulous. So let's see what these guys are saying. Ukrainska pravda. May 2nd, 2023. There will be F-16s. It's only a matter of time. Thank you very much. No surprise here. Thank you for saying it out loud. You are so certain that you already paved the road to be able to say this. They wouldn't have said this in, uh, let's say, March, April and so on last year. No, no, no. But now look at them. They came out. Good for them. I always, I always said, I like, I don't like, but I like an asshole that tells us that he's an asshole than an asshole who tells her that he's a, a perfect, superior, uh, peace-loving, uh, you know, entity. Obviously, I would like a person who's not an asshole and is an uh, excellent person, you know, and says it is, and we, can't, we can all, uh, you know, recognize that. But here we have a country specifically and a group of countries that did no harm, they're the best ones, and they don't do anything. They just defend love and peace and democracy and freedom and all that. And they are not like that. What? How do I know that? Their record shows that. Not me. Record. Just look back. Only 30 years. Get the framework 30 years and find out a lot of times when these loving, peace-loving countries, perfect, fantastic moralizers, self-appointed moralizers of the world uh, acted when they had the this. And right now they're challenged and they don't like it a bit. Empires don't like to be challenged and empires cannot show weakness. Why? Because an empire has a lot of countries, a lot of nations, a lot of people under their control unwillingly. They have them over there. So if they show weakness here, these guys will see it and will stab you in the ribs. That's the, one of the reasons. The little weakness that an empire shows it's going down. And right now, this is a big weakness show. So let's go and see what these guys are saying here. Dimitro Kuleba, Ukraine's foreign minister, is convinced, me too, that sooner or later, the Western allies will decide to provide Ukraine with Western F-16 fighters, as was previously the case with all other weapons. Thank you very much. Finally, man, there you have it. I'm, I'm, not that Kuleba, I don't, I don't think Kuleba is very, very high IQ based on his statements, uh, previous statements. So now I'm saying, oh yeah, oh, yeah, you're smart, Kuleba, because what? You make my point? No, but actions speak louder than words. You're gonna see. You're gonna see all this thing is true. And this Kuleba dares to say it because he brags. That's what he does right now. He just brags. And this is his quote. We will have F-16s. It's only a matter of time. I think it will depend on the US decision and the results of the counteroffensive, Kuleba said. As he states, this is one of the three priorities in military support from the allies, allies along with artillery shells and armored vehicles. No, tanks were all also, uh, how is there was all, drones were, uh, all these things. Don't make it only on three things. 
if, and I'm quoting, if we had F-16s right now, you want Patriot, you have Patriot systems, how about those? If we had F-16s right now, our counteroffensive would be much faster and we would be able to save many more lives. This is for you guys, not for me. This goes one ear goes through the other one. Saving more lives is going and talking with the evil Russians. That's saving more lives. But anyway, there's not a solution. It's illegal to talk to the evil Russians. So there you have it. Of our soldiers and civilians suffering from missile strikes. Okay, this is just trying to mull our sympathy for what's going on over there. I held them also accountable for what's going over there because as I said, you can't control what they are doing, but you can control what you're doing. And the fact that we got this unprovoked, I have to say it because uh, this is how the narrative goes. And if I don't say it, then I'm a denier this, hater this, xeno this, and all that phobic this and the la la. That's how it is in the free world. You, the ones who watch me from outside of the free world, there where you are shackled because you're outside of the three, four, five countries in the West where freedom runs in the street like milk and honey. I'm a little bit, uh, uh, I think my pants are uh, too tight on me and I'm a little bit irritated the, this morning. But really, 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 sometimes, you know, it's just like that. It's just, uh, you can't, uh, you know, you can't, calmly put up with shit. This shit happens every day. Every day they say the same thing. Every day they bring the same idiocracy to us. But sometimes, you know, you have other things in your life where you, you know, it, 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 it fills the, the little glass with bullshit. Bullshit glass gets filled and now I'm trying to, because I can't do anything with it, I have to dump it and start over. And again, pick, 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 drop after drop in it. And again, I'm gonna have another rant and I don't know how many days again. You say, Emil, you have a rant every day. <laughs> you have not seen a rant, Emil's rant. Maybe you've seen one or two uh, a few months ago. I don't know, 10, 8 months ago. This is not a rant. This is a uh, 2% uh, irritated Emil. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.